रेकर्ड नहीं बास है ना ये बाहर रह रहे There's no limit to the visual aesthetics that nature selflessly opens to us. What might appear as an endless void, once explored, feels like an untouched paradise. Once known as the Forbidden Kingdom of Nepal, Mustang has changed a lot since its monarchy was abolished. It has become more tourism friendly. And a place that was once a trekking destination is now more popularly known for its off-road travel experience. You're the first time a day's holiday, sir, guy. Keeping this in mind, my dear friend and I asked ourselves, why not try it with a scooter? We are young. We are definitely very dumb. Why not try it? Mad than you, na? As always, we start from the beginning. रेस वाली काम से देवर नम ना हाँ वी मेड श्योर दैट दिस स्कूटर वाज इन अ रोबस्ट कंडीशन फॉर द ट्रिप सो वी टुक इट फॉर सर्विसिंग द डे बिफोर We then set out for Pokhara the day after. ये माले को मैं मैं था सागे कौसाई ले याद कर रहा था ना वाला। गाइले वो गाइले बने हैं ना? याद तो मैं गाइले को रोक सुनेंगे। गाइले आने हैं ना? हम लोग मैं था सोचता सोचता लाइन में लाइन में एक लेट मैं था वो तीन जीर में है ना? हम लोग दिव्य लेट नहीं ना बने फिर। सोलो था We quickly stop at Muglin for a refill. We store two liters of petrol in bottles and place them in our scooter container, while also tying an empty 10-liter jerkin to the side stand. Due to a severe petrol shortage in Nepal, we were preparing ourselves for the worst. <laughs> The ride to Pokhara was very straightforward, but we did exchange our seats once in a while when we got bored or tired. We had some lunch in Pokhara before heading towards Beni. It started raining unexpectedly in Pokhara. We also tried to fill our tank and bottles with petrol, but sadly, none of the petrol pumps had supplies for weeks in Pokhara. They assured us the suppliers were heading to Pokhara and Beni. And we'll have no petrol shortages from tomorrow. With that note, we moved on to Beni. As the roadways to Mustang are still in progress, you'll find the roadways being constructed at some stops. This means you'll be forced to wait an hour or so, depending on when the construction team lets you pass by. Except for the construction, landslides are some of the major obstacles that can delay your trip. We got up as early as possible and filled our bottles and petrol tank to avoid any delays. We were abundantly clear to ourselves that we did not want to waste any time lining up at the petrol pump. It was a new day, a new adventure. with new experiences we could surely feel the change in landscape as soon as we left beni there were no more perfectly paved highways we were riding side by side of wild river and more and more puddles were revealing themselves as we progressed nepal got down hello hey guys there was this massive waterfall and everyone was getting off their vehicles to take pictures everyone was attracted to it like some sort of a moth to a flame There are bridges, there are puddles, and small settlements scattered here and there throughout the road. 
It just keeps you engaged in many ways. We then arrived at Tatopan. The primary source of attraction for this place is the hot water spring. New hotels are being built as you can see. This might seem like an ordinary river at the first look, but it is a holy river named after the goddess Kali. As it cascades amidst the towering Dhaulagiri and Annapurna ranges, it gives rise to one of the most profound river canyons on earth. After Tatapani comes a police checkpoint where you have to give some personal details before you pass them. The road throughout is a very dusty experience. The road until you reach a place called Khasa is off road. There are a few intersections that you can ask about with the locals. You can see new bridges and roads being built for more accessible transportation for the locals and of course better travel experiences in the future. We then arrived in Lete. The settlement here is very short span but it feels very different. A good different. Small houses surrounded by big hills and trees, road without potholes, just a very calm and peaceful experience. We did not want that part of Lady to end. It was just so comforting. Okay. You can see my friend making his opinions known on cows doing things that cows do. He says these random things once in a while. I've learned to ignore it over the years. He's just quirky that way and I love him for it. We then headed towards Muktina, leaving Lete behind. We came across a resort an hour before reaching Jomsom that also served Thakali food. It was in the middle of nowhere. The scenery of Mount Nilgiri was insane and the ambience of the resort was also very soothing. Besides the scenery and the cultural aspects of things, Mustang is also very well known for locally grown apples. This resort had a massive apple garden. I personally had never seen an apple tree. I wish I had taken a good picture of it. Uh, it is whitish and pinkish. It just radiates really good vibes. After our lunch, we headed straight toward Zomsom. Zomsom is the gateway to the upper Mustang region. As you move towards Zomsom, you clearly feel more connected to the mountains. The mountains were hiding behind these shimmering silver clouds. It felt like you had arrived on a new planet. I could finally feel the adrenaline running through my body once I saw the long ranges of the Himalayas. After almost an hour, we arrived at Zomsom. We have ATMs, bike workshops, hotels, airport. It is like a thriving city in the trans Himalayas of Annapurna. So my friend basically had been here before and his first reaction after getting to Zomsom was, let me take you to this bridge, it's super windy and you're gonna love it. And it actually was very windy. We couldn't hear ourselves, I was holding on to the bridge for my dear life. I have been to bridges in some of the highest altitudes of Himalayas in Nepal, 
but nothing beats how windy it can get in Mustang region. After stepping onto that bridge and one more bridge along the way to Mutinat, I accepted that this was probably the windiest place I had ever been to. After that hefty experience, we continued to Muktinat. Although bumpy and dusty in the beginning phases, as you near Muktinat, a beautifully paced road appears. It was a very calming experience. The age-old settlements appear, and weird but surprisingly beautiful landscape become visible. It just puts you at peace. You can't help but admire the core essence of what makes Mustang what it was and what it is today. We were finally at Muktinath. Muktinath is one of the biggest pilgrimage sites in Nepal. The holy site is known for its 108 taps. It is believed that washing yourself from the 108 taps and taking dips in the holy water of Muktinath is equivalent to washing your sins away and providing salvation after death. We then took showers from the 108 taps and dipped ourselves into the pools. After realizing how cold the water was, we just wanted to get it over with. It was a great experience. We also saw a 32 foot tall statue of the Lord Buddha watching over the mountainous settlement of Mustang while dusk was falling. A perfect way to end the day. We were very excited about the sunrise. <laughs> We just rested on the top roof and admired Mustang for what it was. You don't realize how much you need these moments of peace, these moments of sanity, unless you are living it. A serene heaven disguised as a rugged and relentless emptiness. Mustang had our undivided attention. After a heavy breakfast, we prepared ourselves for the ride back to Pokhara. I'm always curious about the mountains that I see. I prefer getting the names from the locals. So we made inquiries about the peaks that were visible from Muktinath. As we were nearing Kagbeni, there was this small park that seemed like a perfect place for photographs. There was also this massive flock of goats that were being handled by a singular person. 
with the vast jagged landscape. Thawlakiri, the seventh highest mountain in the world in the backdrop. There was no way I was going to let this moment go. The location seemed like a perfect place to capture the moment. Nilgiri and Dholagiri were clearly visible and unbothered by any obstructions. But the road was much busier than we expected. We just couldn't have the roadway for ourselves for even a minute. We waited and waited until we had a few moments for ourselves to stamp this picture. After some photos, we departed from the location. We enjoyed and soaked in the beauty of Mustang as much as we could before reaching Zomsum. We wished not to depart from that peaceful haven, for its soothing presence enveloped us in an inexpressible comfort. We then bought some locally grown apples and homemade alcohol for our families back home. We were not able to travel to the Upper Mustang region at this instance, but the unique landscape we were able to experience in such a short period of time was life-changing. Mustang might not be a definition of what people might characterize as scenic or a beautiful place, but personally, it made me realize that there's so much more to see, so much more to explore, and even a relentless looking place like this can make you realize how beautiful life is.